Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Kentucky Anna Baseball Podcast. My name is Teague Ridge. As always, I'm your host. I'm joined by Rick Hines. What's going on? Rick, I'm pretty excited. We may have um, a guest that we've been wanting to have on this show for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm super excited about this. Uh, Coach Dan McDonald joins us now. Coach, how are you? I'm good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I got to let you know, Coach. So Rick and I are both huge UofL fans. We uh, frequent a lot of your games. So... I'm a little, um, little starstruck. Yeah, we know your program well, so <laughs> thank you for doing this. No, thanks for having me on. Any any opportunity we get to talk this great game, especially this time of the year, it's so much fun. Well, so we listened to a little bit of your speech there, and, and one of my first questions here, Coach, is, is so we are entrenched in the youth baseball world, um, and one of the things that we're always trying to do is create a culture, right? And I think the winning programs have a winning culture. What's the number one way to do that? Now, obviously, it's a little bit different at your level, but when we're talking youth high school, what do we need to be doing to create a winning culture? Well, it's, uh, it is, I, I love youth baseball, so, you know, I think you just have to, you have to define what are the goals, what are we trying here, and, and I get it, you know, with youth baseball, you've got, you know, let's just say uh, 10 kids and you got a couple that want to play in the big leagues and you got a couple that are dreaming to play in college and right. you got a couple that just want to go to the swimming pool. Yeah, it's out there with their buddies, right? <laughs> you know, yep. so I, it, it is a challenge. There's, there's a fine line. Um, I just keep reminding myself that uh, I'm an ambassador of the game. So like when we have our camps and I love our camps, uh, especially the youth camps in the summer. And it's, I, I want to teach the game. I want to teach a kid how to hit, sure. or field a ground ball, or throw strikes. But just as much, I want him to have fun. Yeah. And I want him to enjoy this. And I, I think that's the real challenge for coaches. Um, we, we want to respect the game and, and we want to teach the fundamentals. But we got to make sure kids are having fun. Yep. And, um, That's a big piece. You know, and, and, and I get it. We're all competitive. and But, you know, it's just, oh, human nature takes over. And we want to win every tournament. And, and we want to tell everybody we're ranked third in the state. And we're 50 and 5. Right. And it, it just, yep. it, you know, you hear that from a lot of people. And, and I just, when, when coaches talk like that, I just, I just cringe a little bit because I think, while you're doing that, are you losing kids? Yeah. Are, are you, you know, right. is there a kid that you're just sticking on the bench or you're just jamming them in the eight or nine hole every game because you're so caught up right. with winning all these little tournaments that half your team is going to turn away from the game of baseball mm -hmm. over the next five years? So mm -hmm. th th that would always be my caution. And, and I'm competitive. I don't want to act like if I mean if I'm coaching a 10U team, believe me, I'm gonna try to win the tournament <laughs> sure, too. Sure. I just think we, we always have to we just gotta kind of evaluate ourselves and really look at are, are we checking the main boxes? You know what what is it that we're trying to accomplish, and let's make sure we do our best to do that. So one of the things that we struggle with a little bit, and I've, I've heard you speak about this in the past, but it's competition, right? So if you've got kids that are competing for the same spot. Um, and they don't get to play shortstop, dad goes and creates a whole new team so they can play that spot. And then once they get to your level, they haven't seen the competition to get on the field because it's always that new team. Yeah. You know, we, we preach that at our level. We want these kids to compete. We want them to – the kid pushing you is going to make you better. So we really think that's important. But do you, what's your feelings on the whole competition side of things? Yeah, it's um, – I've – I've been talking a lot about our program, and, and, and that word has probably been front and center because when you are competitive, there's so many things that, that sprinkle off of that um, about being a great teammate or sacrificing and, and things like that. But you just you, you challenge uh, parents or coaches, and I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not a perfect coach. I always wish I could go back and do some things differently. But are we preparing the path? For the player or are we preparing the player for the path and right and the goal is i have to prepare this player for the path and so if he's not the best shortstop on this team well you know what then he's gonna have to play another position and he's gonna have to work harder mm -hmm. to be a better shortstop or win the job mm -hmm. or get used to 
playing another position because, you know, I use this phrase a lot um, because I've seen it so true. Sometimes when you lose, you really win, you know, and that's hard in the moment, you know, well, I didn't win the shortstop job, so they stuck me in the outfield and and you're going to look back. There's going to be a point in your career where, hey, I'm not the best this or that. But you know what? I did play this position, mm-hmm. and it's attractive to me as a coach when you've played more positions, and it's now attractive to pro ball. Right. You know, you see the the, the Kike Hernandez's, sure, um, and 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 these type of players uh, in the big leagues that they're versatile, they can play multiple positions. The value of that. So, you know, I know it's hard because you're thinking, well. My kid's going to be a shortstop or hopefully a shortstop on the varsity team or the college team. So, therefore, he's got to play shortstop. But there, there's a balance there to say, you know what, maybe he's not good enough to be a shortstop. Maybe it's better if he does play another position. Sure. You know? Sure, you're figuring out where you, where you fit on the field, right? Yeah. So what is something you wish us as youth coaches did more of? Whether it's preaching, whether it's coaching, what is something that you feel like from the youth level we could do just from what you've seen when you get these guys into your program? Where could we do a better job of coaching? I, I don't – I think the, the coaching at the young level is really, really good. My number one concern is arm care. Yep. You know, and, and it's, not, it's not the youth coach's fault. The, the problem is – Johnny, when you look back on a summer, has actually had maybe like four different coaches. Right. He played for his uh, rec team or his <laughs> youth team or oh, high yeah. school team. Then he played for a travel coach. Then he went to this showcase or mm-hmm. tryout. Mm-hmm. Then he went to this event. And so the problem is, and it's not their fault, it's not the high school coach or the AU coach or the guy running the – the, the PBR event, it's it's none of their fault. The problem is it's Johnny's responsibility or his parents to monitor the workload yep. on that young man. And, and that's where I've seen the increase of arm injuries over the years is there's just not one sole voice or one person monitoring his, his arm care. And and when you go back, you know, like I said, we right, we, we walked uphill to school in the snow. Oh yeah, that's right. You Both know? ways. Yeah. That's right. So, but but the difference back then was there was a high school team and a legion team. Right. And you had your high school coaches, and then the legion team was run by one of the three high school coaches with your three yeah. Your three local high schools. Sure. Yep. So there was just more consistency with who your coach was. So yep. I always say Brendan McKay played for his high school coach, and he played for his 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 Legion team, which was his high school coach. <laughs> and he didn't chase showcases, yeah. and he didn't chase events, and therefore he had one coach throughout the year who knew exactly what he was getting. That that's that's the key. And so I try to just and again, it's not the coach's fault. Because it's it's the parents. I'm trying to educate parents. Look, you're responsible right. for your son's sure. arm care. Sure. And so guess what? You gotta start saying no. Right. Yeah. And you gotta start yeah. logging his pitches. Right. And I'm not talking about I hate to say the overbearing parent, <laughs> you know, who's trying to coach his kid. I'm just saying as a parent, you have to be in tune. If your son or daughter is a pitcher, pitching and throwing overhand, you have to just have an idea as to how many innings or how often they're throwing. And if, you, if, if you're a former pitcher or, or college player yourself, usually those dads pay attention. But if you're not, and let's just say I'm a dad and I never played baseball, but right. my son loves it, right. then you have to find someone who's going to monitor his workload. To, hey, give me thumbs up or thumbs down. Yep. You know, should he pitch in this event or should he not? And and that's my biggest concern with youth baseball is is overuse and and the number of arm injuries that if they don't happen when they're young, they're doing damage in, in that part of the body that eventually it's gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna unfold. To Coach, this is a weird one for me though, and, and I don't disagree with you at all. But Chris Burke, who's a good friend of mine, who I know you know well, 
Chris was on our podcast and he said, hey guys, sometimes I don't think we throw enough because we were talking about, you know, arm care and pitch counts. And he's like, you know, look, man, we'll leave a guy out there at 12 years old and throw him 100 pitches because we know, you can know, handle it. But it's interesting, though, because there's this debate and there's science all over the map with this thing. And we just we're not. Seems like there's a divide there somewhere. And, and I think what, what Chris is talking about, who I so much respect and love, he's talking about it's not uniformed across the board saying, you know, the pitch count and mm-hmm. this, that. Yeah, it, it's because what Chris was probably referring to is, hey, I know my kid and I know how strong he is. And, yep. and he, you know, that kid might only be built up to throw 50 pitches. Right. This kid might be built up to throw 100. But I think, I think where Chris would probably agree on is if that kid threw 100 pitches on a Saturday, he probably shouldn't be throwing until the next weekend. Right. In terms of... And, and what's happening is 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 Johnny's throwing a hundred pitches on a Saturday, and then on Tuesday he's this going to this playing. event and he's throwing in this bullpen yeah. or he's trying out for something, and and that's where that guy it's not the guy his fault was running the event, it's that the parents let him. Yep. You know where and and so our biggest advice our encouragement is as a as a parent. Be ready to say no. Yeah. It's, it's not their fault for him getting invited to this, that, and the other. It's it's really neat to get invited to all these events and right. showcases and try out for this team and try out <laughs> for this event, and, and you want your ranking to right. go up. Yeah. And, and, hey, that that's fine if those things are important to you. But at the end of the day, only you know your calendar. Yep. So you better sit down with that calendar 12 months out of the year and say, okay, when do we want to be 100%? And then let's backtrack. We should start so many weeks before that, and we should build our way up to be 100%. And when we get to 100%, how long do we want to be at 100%? Sure. And then what's my workload going to be for these next three or four months? And then guess what? We got to say, put the ball down. And and so, unfortunately, I wish I wish families and all of youth baseball would probably get a little more coaching encouragement on that. And I've heard of pitch smart and there's mm-hmm. some organizations yep. that yep. are just trying to trying. monitor to the some load guidelines, yeah. which is why i'm a multi-sport guy and i'm a big fan of multi-sports and it's and i love baseball right but it's i don't think it's healthy to play baseball 12 months out of the year and one of the reasons is it's not a natural motion putting the elbow up okay. above your shoulder you know throwing is not a natural motion so there are months throughout the year where the ball should not get picked up. So that's what I like if you're playing football or soccer yep. or basketball. It's very healthy that you're not throwing. I also, as much as I love baseball, it's not the most athletic sport in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. And I hate to mm-hmm. say it, but sometimes it's not the toughest sport mm-hmm. in the world, meaning yep. When you play other sports, and, and I kind of lean on football and basketball because I'm familiar with them, there's a great athletic piece to football and basketball, and there's a great toughness piece. And I don't, when I say toughness, it's not just the physical side, it's, right. it's the mental side sure. of yeah. it's the one on one competition in yep. basketball. You're banging bodies, you're, right. you're playing bruised. You, you, there, there's just so many qualities that I love. And I'm not saying you got to play them all the way through your senior high school. I'm just saying I, we're all worried about the kid who tries to specialize at mm-hmm. the age of ten. Yeah, which is crazy. Right. And 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 because I and I only I only go from experience, right? Because I've been doing this for a long time. How many parents have come up to me, kind of encouraging me or hoping, "Hey, coach, yeah, be, be a be a loud voice because people will listen to you." Right. We spent the last six years. We didn't go on family vacation. Yeah. We didn't let Johnny play another sport. And we ran around mm-hmm. this psycho AU level and we pushed it. And then at the age of 14, he just said, I don't want to play anymore. And he walked away and we looked at it as parents going, did, did we make some wrong decisions mm-hmm. here? You know? yep. and, that, and it's hard because nobody has a crystal ball, but that's where I would always try to pour into families as to why you don't need to play year round, but hey, I love. You want to hit with Chris Burke. You want to go to the cages right. and, and take the lessons and do all that. I think that stuff's great. Yeah. But I don't know if playing twelve months a year on a team with all the the overhand action of throwing is the healthiest thing. Makes sense. 
I like it. Yeah. So I'm going to let you do a shameless plug here. I'm a member of the ABCA, and I've gotten so much out of it. It's insane. Um, just from the, just the podcast and the videos you can watch on their website. Uh, to me, I've pushed this on our podcast a lot that I think the baseball coaches should be members of it. It's, it's cost effective. You get a lot out of it. But obviously, you being heavily involved, um, give us your plug for, for the, the ABCA. Well, uh, the convention itself, um, you know, I'm, I think I'm 30 consecutive years where I did mm -hmm. not miss the convention. And I just talked about it this past year as I finished out uh, being the, I was the president this past year. My younger son was born on December 23rd, <laughs> about 20 years ago. And I made that ABCA convention on, you know, January. There you 5th, go. All you right. Know? Yeah. And I, I Showed you the commitment. Yeah. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to like brag as if, you know, but that just, I trusted, <laughs> I trusted my wife and my son was healthy, you know, about 12 days old. Right. And, um, and so I ran off to the convention for just a few days because it's an opportunity to learn. Yeah, I think as coaches, we always want to be learning. We want to have a growth mindset. Yep. Uh, it's an opportunity to connect. I think we can connect with a lot of other people in the game of baseball. Uh, the products, it's always new products. Yeah. What's the latest and greatest out there? Um, and then now with technology, what you can get off the – everything's archived. Yeah, right. So all the videos yep. and the podcasts. And and um, and I, I think it's, it's great for USA baseball, right? You know, USA basketball went through their downswing and then – they, they got Jerry Colangelo and Coach Krzyzewski, and they, they got us back. And I think, what was it, 2008, yep. you know, after after losing or yep. coming in third to six for like a 10-year stretch, we got USA Basketball back on top. And so, you know, baseball for me is um, – I think it's great that the ABCA is, is doing so much for the game of baseball. So whether you're a parent mm -hmm. or a youth coach or mm -hmm. high school – you know what I see more of? Over the last five plus years, I see more more pro guys there, more pro coaches, yeah. and organizations are sending guys yeah. to the convention. So, I think I think it's great for for our country that we're just promoting the game of baseball. And as I said in the beginning, I'm an ambassador of the game. So for me, getting a chance to be on the board and just to get get behind the scenes as to what's going on was was very inspirational and encouraging for me to try to do my part to just continue to help this game grow. Awesome. A couple more questions, Coach. We'll let you go. Rick, I know you're dying to ask something over here. I, I mean, there's so many questions rolling in my head. I'm just I, – I can't even think of one. All right. So, Coach, what's your favorite drill? What's something that – let's give some value here. So we get a ton of baseball coaches to listen to this. What, what, what's something that every coach should use in a practice? I'm going to say um, I'm going to go on my base running kick. Um, if we hit – we take BP every day, and we, like, field ground balls and fly balls every single day, right? Like, what coach goes on into a practice where you're not going to let your shortstop field ground balls and he's going to hit, right? I always say, well, why don't you run the bases every day? So I, I challenge agree. I challenge coaches. So my favorite base running drill, it's a simple drill. Uh, you can get a coach or a manager or, or a pitcher, put him on the mound, and he comes in the set position – um, and we're just working on our steel breaks. So, so I have a guy taking a lead off first. What I do is I throw down some throwdown bases behind first base. So between first base and let's say towards right field. Okay. I throw down about four or five feet away. I throw down a throwdown base, then another and another. So if you're in the stands, you would see basically four first bases. Okay. Right One on where line. the original right. first base is. Following. And, and make your way down the right field line. Got it. It doesn't go all the way into right field, but it goes towards the back of the infield. Okay. And I have four guys taking a lead at once. Basically, I'm getting four reps with one pitcher. Uh, I gotcha. Okay. And, and what we're working on is our jumps and our reaction coming back to the bag, right? So if he lifts his leg, all four guys will cross over and try to steal if he picks off all four guys will we'll turn and come back so okay it's a base running drill we call it four line stealing so i tell coaches if you've got nine or 12 guys you can do three line stealing you can have three you can have sure. two lines sure. hey, hey we only got 10 kids at this practice i don't want to kill them yeah i'm going to put five in the first line five in the next line and we're going to get instead of just doing one at a time right, right you're getting two reps or three or four reps 
guys are going at a time, and it's it's a it's just a great. It, like I said, we don't make BP so complicated. No, we like to throw a ball in there. And we like to let a kid hit it. Don't make stealing bases too complicated. Let, let's keep it simple. If you're youth baseball and you're not stealing just yet, then that's fine. You, there's still base running drills that oh, you yeah. can do. And I For just sure. think, and again, what's my concern? We don't do enough athletic yep. pieces for the game. So yep. you youth coaches out there, when you're running your practices, hey, BP is great and fielding ground balls and fly balls are great. Make them run. Make them run the bases because they need it for athleticism and they, and they need the practice. It's the only way they get better. Hey, and you win by scoring runs too. Right. I mean. Well, and I heard him in the conference just a little bit ago talking about he is not a fan of striking out. Like he <laughs> put the ball in play. Uh, we preach you know, that the three outcomes or whatever they talk about now. The home run. Yeah. You know, it's, it's no big deal if you strike out. If you just come up and hit a home run the next time, uh, but. Uh, yeah. We're we're a big proponent. We got a team where we don't have we don't have the big kids that are hitting it out. We're a base hit and run and steal yep. team. We got a lot, built on. a lot of speed, a lot of speed. Team, you know, we, we in my aspect, I kind of think we mirror a little bit to the U of L teams. You know, in the past, we're we're a hit and run and yep. steal some bases. You better know how to bunt for us. Yeah. You, you got to know how to defend it. And you got to know how to do it. It's and right. there's a lot of coaches our level that are like, why are you bunting? I've had yeah. parents get mad at me. For having their given a bunt sign, I'm, I'm serious. A parent said, "You cannot right. do not Don't make, make my, my kid, kid bunt." bunt. Yeah. Like you got to know how to do that, and I and I'd like to hear your opinion on that yeah. because it's something for us. You got to be able to do. Yeah. It's just it's a part of the game. I don't I don't ever want to act like I'm anti home run, and you're never allowed to strike out. I I, I get. I mean, I respect the game enough. I know how hard it is to hit. Um, I think it's all relevant to. What talent do you have? Right. Yeah, if you got six kids that can really bomb the ball, and you, as a coach, you just got to make a decision. Yeah, sure. Let free these guys up. Let yeah. them swing. I, I can I can deal with it. I, I doubt anyone's got six kids, but <laughs> but but let's just say you got yeah you got two or three in your right. lineup. Right. But the problem is if you got six kids in your lineup that are high strikeout guys, it's just it's the the game. You're, they're too easy and out. It's yep. an easy out when when you strike out and and you got to force the defense to make plays and you got to realize how difficult it is to field ground balls, catch fly balls, uh, fields, elements, weather, and so putting the ball in play is is huge. I I I laugh at anybody who says their kids shouldn't bunt or anything like that. And when the postseason starts. I always, our kids are watching the games, our players, so we're always talking about it the next day. Okay, who, mm -hmm. who saw the, the Braves mm -hmm. Dodgers mm -hmm. game last sure. night? And who saw, you know, and it's funny because you'll hear the announcer go, he has zero sacrifices on the <laughs> right. year. Yeah. But they're asking him to sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the big game. That's right, yeah. in mm -hmm. the biggest game. And, and what I would tell any parent um, is, the best bunners that I've ever had were the best hitters. It doesn't mean I made them bunt. That's I didn't make Brendan McKay or Chris Dominguez bunt a whole lot. But if we were to do a drill right now and I would throw those two in with six or seven other guys, you'd go, wow, mm -hmm. Dominguez They'd be the best. is a good mm -hmm. bunner. And here's what I know. They have aptitude. So when you teach them something, they have the ability – and, and, and they're very fundamental, and they compete. They lock in and compete. And, and as you said it, I believe you, you referred to it, I want to steal a lot of bases and run the base and be aggressive on the bases because I want to be able to defend that yeah. when we're playing that team. Yep, that's right. If my team can bunt and understand the offensive weapon we have, the ultimate sacrifice, I'm sacrificing myself to get a guy into scoring position, then when we're facing that mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. that's going to bunt and play that mm -hmm. style, we're going to be able to defend it. And there's a lot of percentages out there. Um, if you don't get an out on the bunt, you know, you're giving up uh, multiple runs in that inning. It's like a 75% chance. Yeah. If you don't get an out on the bunt, you're giving up two runs in that inning. So sometimes when we're bunting, we're not just playing for one run. Right. We know if this kid picks it up and throws the ball into the right field corner, we're about to put up a big crooked number right here. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, and 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 sixty something percent of the games are won 
when one team scores more runs in one inning than the other team scores in the entire game. game right. So if, take a Major League Baseball game, yep. break down a week of games, and just study And wh what you're saying is the big inning wins. Yeah. And you got a bad fielding pitcher. He's big, he's tall, he throws hard, but this kid doesn't field real well. Right. We got first and second, nobody out. If we put a good bunt down right here, there's a chance this kid's going to skip it to first, yeah. slip, throw it into right field. You're going to win the game. Yeah. Like you're going to score three runs probably in that inning. And, and so there's lots of reasons why I use the bunt. Here's one. I always say I take my little speed guy who's a, who's a base stealer and a bunter, and then I'll take a Brendan McKay. Or okay. I probably need to – let's use Cam Masterman, yep. big right-handed sure. hitter. And I say, um, all right. Chris Sang, little, little small, speedy center fielder. When Chris Sang comes up, let's see where the third baseman plays. And when Cameron Massman comes up, let's see where the third baseman <laughs> plays. And then so you grab another big right-handed hitter, let's say Metzinger. Okay. And you say, hey, Ben, where would you rather the third baseman play when you come up? Where they play Sang or where they play Masterman? And they all go, I'd rather him play where, Sang, when, where they play Sang. Why? Well, because they play like they're inside they're the base, in. they're on the grass, and, and why would you rather them play there? Well, I got an easier chance to hit a double down the line or hit right. a base hit in the six hole. Right. I said, exactly. So sometimes when we bunt, we're bunting for the scouting report. We're bunting so those third basemen play close. So I sacrifice one at bat. Now everything's on synergy, everything's on TV. <laughs> Scouting reports are way in depth. Yeah. So if they see that you bunt, yeah. Coach Williams, like, I mean, he if he ever sees a guy bunt, he's he hates <laughs> to give up a bump for hit. And I'm the opposite. I hate to give up a double down the line or ball in the six hole. So I'm always like, back up, right. <laughs> back up. Like my first baseman's back up. I hate giving up because the reality is most people can't bunt. Right. My point is there's there's more than than just hey I'm getting the guy from first to second you know I, I think there's a lot of mental factors but there's also physical factors that come into play and so bunting bunting's a big part of the game and it says that I care about you or I care about my team that's why they call it a sacrifice right you know and so I think I think you just got to educate educate kids yep why we're bunning and it doesn't mean you can't hit right you, know, you think it's because right. you can't right. hit it's just you know hey guys let's make this pitcher uncomfortable let's make this third baseman uncomfortable and and if they're if they don't do it offensively then they probably don't practice it defensively exactly right. so there so that's are reasons you got to know how to defend it too that's right exactly. coach i got maybe one or two more i want to be respectful <laughs> of your time here um what's the th number one thing you're looking at when recruiting kids obviously they got to be able to play or you wouldn't even be in the it, talking to them but what are some things that you look at from a recruiting standpoint that a lot of times people aren't thinking that you're looking at i always say we're big on three pillars um the academic piece i mean you don't have to be a 4.0 student i just think getting a college degree has to be important to you I'm not saying you can't be interested in the draft and if you're a first round pick you can't sign but just coming to college to get a degree is something that has to be important to you uh, we preach the education the second thing is is player development you have to be willing to work and get better and realize you're coming here to get better we are a developmental program right. um, which usually means we're going to take your weaknesses and the things that you struggle with, and we're going to hopefully create them to become some of your strengths. And that's that's uncomfortable for yep. kids and hitters, and that's not always the easiest. Um, and and the third thing is, is you have to be committed to winning. Don't come to Louisville if winning is not a big deal. Like, I don't want you to come here because you like our basketball team or you grew up a fan or you're third generation right. Louisville. Like, that's yep. nice. Yep. Don't come here because of that. Yeah. Come here because you saw us on ESPN or you saw us in Omaha and you go, man, I want to play in Omaha. And if you come for the right reasons, then more times than not, it's, it's going to be a good fit. Um, and, and so in recruiting, we try to be very upfront 
Um, I don't want to say we scare kids, but you know, I always tell our coaches we've got to be who we are. Yep. Let's not sugarcoat this. I don't want a kid to get in our locker room and go, "Wow, these guys are a little over the top." Yeah. I didn't know it was this intense. <laughs> right. Like, like, you know, you want kids that that come for the right reasons. I I get it. When you ask kids what's at the top of their goal chain, it's usually being a big leaguer, mm-hmm. and 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 I get that. Even though maybe not all of them think that they can make it to the big leagues, but for some of them, then it's just play pro ball. And, yeah, and that's sure. okay. If, Make if, a living playing baseball. That's right. Well, just if I could just be good just, enough to play pro ball yeah. one day. Like, yep. if, I know if I'm good enough to play at Louisville, then there's a chance. I'm, and, and I get it. You know, um, I respect each kid kind of has an idea of their yeah. level and their skill set. And, I, and I'm, I'm good with that. Hey, we're going we're gonna to try to develop and help you get ready to move through through a pro organization. And so – yeah, we're we're looking for we're looking for good students, good kids. We we try to find out as much as we can about character. Um, I love a toughness piece. I want to coach this is a tough kid. Um, you know, you worry about spoon fed kids, entitled kids, sure. kids that have it a little too easy, haven't had the work. Um, like I said, the the path has been prepared for mm-hmm, them, mm-hmm. as opposed to just give me a kid who's prepared for the path. I yep. don't care about his ranking and played on this glamour team or that glamour team, and that that stuff really don't mean a whole lot. Let, let me let me talk to some people I know and I trust, and if they know me, they know our program. They go, "Hey, coach, this kid can play for you. I'm telling you that this kid, um, then then it, it'll go a long way." You know, and so it's it's not an exact science, but you just try to do your best to uh, be who we are, be clear as to who we are, and try to attract those type of kids and families. What kid did you miss out on that went pro out of high school that you would have loved to have on campus? Dalen Lyle, we've had on the show before. He seemed like a superb kid that obviously you know made a, made made his decision. But was there a kid you missed out on that you're like, man, I really wish I would have had an opportunity to coach him? Well, I mean, anytime you lose a Dalen Lyle, um, you know, when Joe Adele, and I say it's Jordan, everybody calls yeah, him everybody Joe. Yeah, Joe, right. <laughs> well, I knew him when he was Jordan, okay. right? And he was a middle schooler, and he was coming to our camps. Mm-hmm. So after his eighth grade year, well, I think we probably knew we were going to offer him in the eighth grade. We offer him in the ninth grade. Okay. <laughs> and he's actually he's a better pitcher than he is a hitter. Oh, wow. He's really raw as a hitter. But he's throwing mid eighties and he's a big kid. Wow. And we're like, you know what, this kid's gonna be a he's gonna be a player one day. So we, we make the offer and the family commits. And of course, you know, the dad plays college football. Right. We just yeah. love the moms in education, sure. the sisters and out. We just love the whole family. And then as you watch him through high school, even his freshman year, you see him hit a few balls in the trees, but he's raw and he swings and misses. You just think he's gonna be a really good two way player. Right. You don't know he's going to be the tenth pick of the draft, <laughs> you know, and 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 I and I say I missed out on him because I do believe in his heart he mm-hmm. wanted to come to Louisville, okay, and I know he'd have loved it if he'd have come, sure. And sometimes you just, you know, always selfishly wish he was the fiftieth pick, right. and Not the tenth pick, because <laughs> right. I do believe if I made a tougher decision, I, I do believe if he was the fiftieth pick, he would have he, came. He's mm-hmm. coming to school, mm-hmm. um, and so. You just you hate it. You hate it for the kids. As selfishly as I want to coach them, my life's not going to change. Sure, I might win a few more games or lose a few more games. Sure. I mean, my life's not changing. I mean, really, it's not. Like I said, it's their lives are changing drastically. Yep. You know, and I always just selfishly knowing what college offers. Just yeah. college. Just right. the experience. Just a college experience That's in it. general. Just yeah. hey, the real world's not easy. Yeah. Pro baseball is not easy. Yeah. Right. If if your son can spend three years with us, I promise you. I can't promise you to make it to the big leagues. I can't <laughs> promise you to get more money. I can't. There's certain things I, I I really be careful. I stay away from. Here's what I can promise: We're going to help him get a degree, yep. a degree that's going to stay with him for the rest of his life, and we're going to help him grow in this process. We're, we're gonna we're gonna help him as you transition from getting out from under your parents home Mm -hmm. living on your own and we're going to deal with nutrition and self-discipline and setting your own alarm clock and all these things and and getting on a bus or a plane or playing in florida state in front of seven thousand eight thousand 
playing in a regional, a super regional, playing in front of 25,000 Omaha, playing in the Cape Cod League. All these things we're going to do, I promise, when we send them out at 21 and they cross the line into pro ball, I think they're just, I think they're more prepared to be a big leaguer. Yeah. But more importantly, I think they're just, they're more prepared for life. For life, right. to be a man. I mean, you're learning. It helps that. you grow up. As, helps opposed, you grow up. as opposed to going straight to high school, it's a tough, it's a tough transition, man. Especially I mean, you got to be pretty mature. Especially your big programs like Louisville, you know, you, you've got the nutritionists, you've got all the resources to help you develop into a fine human. Yeah. And a baseball player. No, that's you know. right. Because baseball is short lived. So yeah. I, I don't. You know, you can make it to the big leagues, play ten years in the big leagues. You're, I mean, you're 35 years old. Yeah. Like, what are you doing for the next right. 35 years? <laughs> right. So right. I'm always like, would you like to have a degree? Would you like to have the network, mm -hmm. uh, the 150,000 alumni from the University of Louisville? And you, and you're not. It's not just about using the alumni from our university. You're part of a fraternity. Right. Right. When, right. When you played college baseball at the University of Louisville and the ACC, you know how many people you're going to run across in this world that went to Michigan or they went to Southern Cal, they oh, went yeah. to LSU, or, or gosh, if they played a college sport, yep. if they swam at Georgia, or they, do you realize that the fraternity that you become a part of when you step on a college campus, I just, I just hate, I feel sad when, when kids and families miss out on yeah. that. When they Makes just, sense. They miss it's not necessarily their fault. I, I, I feel like they, I don't want to say they get bullied into it, but it's just, it's hard. It's hard to turn down. It's hard to turn down a Millions crooked number dollars, yeah. Yeah, with a lot of zeros. And it's hard to turn oh, yeah. down that, that dream of so-called making it to the big leagues. Oh, yeah. I get it. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's a tough decision for parents. I, sure. I, they really get put in a real challenging spot. Sure. You just, you want to do what's best for your, for your kid. And you just don't know, yeah. you know. All right, Coach, last question. Thank you so much for your time. So you mentioned in your speech just now that you, you don't keep secrets. You don't keep anything close to the vest. So as being one of the, the most successful college coaches in, in the game, what is the secret to being as successful as you are, not only as a coach but as, from the program standpoint? Uh, I mean, you hear a lot of coaches say you got to be you, you know, and, and – um, Kids can see through if you're phony or if you're fake. Um, it doesn't mean we, we, we're not supposed to grow and we're not supposed to try to get better in certain areas. I mean, yeah, I'd like to think there's things I did 20 years ago that I don't do today. And, and so, yeah, maybe there's a kid I coached 20 years ago that would see me today and go, man, he's, you he's know. soft now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you know. It's not the same guy. Yeah, I mean, that guy. You know, but I just, you, you got to be who you are. Um, and and I think, like I said, in reference to the to the pro thing, it's, this is about them. Yeah. You know, I I I I'm gonna glow when I talk about my playing experience, not because I was a great player, but because I just I had an awesome experience in college baseball. Those guys, it's a group of those guys that we text every single day. I did get to play in the College World Series, another fraternity mm -hmm. that I'm just so proud to be mm -hmm. a part of. And I think of I think of what college baseball did for me, and I just I want that for my players. I well, and there's something special about that group too, right? Because it's not only you that's successful out of that group. There's a lot of guys that have went on with some successful baseball careers that were part of that team. No doubt, coaches, coaches that, that there's great coaches out there and players, and but it's just about. It's you get to experience something unique in life, and I, I want kids to enjoy this. I mean, yeah, we want to win a national championship, and we stick our chest out with mm -hmm. the wins and this, that, and the other. I just I want kids to glow when they think of their experience at Louisville. It's not always easy; doesn't work out for everybody. The path is usually much harder than they realize. But man, are they ready for life? Yeah. Are they, that that. that I would like to think that they could wake up in the morning, whether it's the best of times or the worst of times, and know that they can make it. You yep. know, because I, I did it at the University of Louisville. Man, we're, we're, it wasn't easy. I worked my tail off. They, they, most of them are great teammates before they get here. But at least we we emphasize being a great teammate. And and I do know this. We talk about others a lot, and so I just I feel like kids leave our program. And they come from 
most of them come from great families, so we get a lot of credit. But all we're doing is parents are passing the baton mm -hmm. on to us, and we're trying mm -hmm. to we're trying to uphold what they taught their kids. But I do know how much we're preaching about others, and I don't know if the youth, I don't know if young kids hear that enough. It's it's you know you're you're chasing a ranking, you're chasing the draft, you're chasing your scholarship, you're chasing. I get it. You're chasing things for you. And I don't know if at that, up until that point in their life, they've heard about others enough. Yep. And at some point, and that was the greatest thing about coaching. And I, I'd like to think I was a great teammate. Yeah. I loved my teammates. Gosh, I loved winning. Sure. They were my best friends. But as soon as I got into coaching, I remember the enjoyment of practice thinking, as I'm looking around the field going, man, I'm just helping others. Right. Like, this is not about me. Yeah. And, and I remember the first time I went to Omaha as a coach. And, I'm, and I'm, I didn't realize, you don't realize it when you're a player. When you play in Omaha, I mean, it's just, you're in that bubble. Man. Yeah. And that bubble okay. is around you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you're not trying to be a good teammate. You're not trying to win. There's just a lot of things you don't realize. Right. And, and, and when I went as a coach and I got to take a step back, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is way bigger yeah. than just the, the shortstop yeah. or the second baseman. This was about. See everything. Oh, yeah. man, this was about the program, their sure. families, the friends. I had people coming out of the woodwork from my Citadel ties reuniting being mm -hmm. a part of the Omaha mm -hmm. experience and mm -hmm. and that's what I love about coaching if, if if I say I'm a Christian and I believe I'm to love and to serve well I don't think you have to be a Christian to be a coach I would say do the same thing as a coach right and if you can love and serve your athletes I think I think you got a chance to be a pretty good coach because at the end of the day that's that, that's what we're trying to do, man, is just love these kids and serve them and, and give them give them something that they can be proud of and, and just pass the baton, prepare them for the next stage of life. I love it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Coach, we, we get 15,000 listens per episode. We've got certain episodes that have 100,000 listens, and Kentucky baseball is something people are passionate about especially from the youth level, from the high school level, from the college level. Thank you for what you do because you always make time um, to, to, to build the game, and it shows in this area. Well, again, it's a win-win, right? I like to say it's a win-win. Um, we, we try to help youth baseball and amateur baseball, and, hey, they, they've helped us a lot. Yeah. I, got, I got a lot of Kentucky All-Americans and superstars, <laughs> and, you know, I'm bragging about – Adam Duvall from Butler yep. High School and go. Will Smith yeah. from KCD. KCD. You, know, you know how many dads come up to me over the years? <laughs> you know, I coached Will. Oh, he yeah. Was and yeah. I, you know what? Hey. Well, and even guys like um, Adam Elliott is, is a friend. Uh, my son's actually taking some pitching lessons from him. You know, Adam's a guy that you've kept on your staff yeah. because, you know, just went through and did the right things. I mean, there's a lot of great kids from this area that can play. I, I can promise you we, we will benefit, and we have benefited, from the success and the growth of youth baseball. There's a reason Texas or LSU or Florida and those type of programs are what they are. Mm -hmm. It's because the baseball in those parts of the country are strong. Yep. And we would not be the type of program we are if baseball was not strong in this part of the country. So it's been fun to – my son grew up. I got to see him grow up through the system and right. play in the organizations and the Vipers and, yeah, and all go. the different competitive organizations. And he took, whether he hit with Lou Ott yeah. or Chris Burr, there you go. there's a lot of good baseball there people is. in this city. Yeah. And there's a, as we know, you can go back, there's a long history, yeah. right, you know, of the of the legends and the Hall of Famers sure. that came from the city. And with Louisville Slugger, it's uh I get it, man. It's a if you want to say we're a basketball state, hey, <laughs> I got no problem saying Kentucky's a basketball state. But I don't ever want Kentucky to think you know we're gonna take we're gonna take a back seat to anybody mm -hmm. when it comes to baseball. I, I think, and that's what we love about you know our players from Kentucky, and then and then we get a lot of Midwest kids, man. We we're gonna play the TCU's and we're gonna play the Floridas and we're gonna play the Cal State Fullerton's, sure. but we're gonna stick our flag in the ground and we're gonna say, hey, this is is a bunch of Kentucky kids and Midwest kids, and let's see if, if our group's better than your California group or your Texas group or your Florida group. I mean, 
I love representing that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, so yeah. proud of that flag. Awesome. Yeah, I love it, too. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us. I appreciate what you do. It's great that you guys talk about the game and, and uh, share the love. This is, this is great stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach.